Before we start, I'd like you to consider these words of Sherlock Holmes. It's a mistake to theorize before we have the data. One begins to twist facts to suit theories, instead of theories to suit the facts. Tonight on Fortian TV, we meet the creature who some people believe could be the missing link. We meet the tallest man in the world. Massive. And we meet people who believe they really have been to Never Never Land. Is man an ape or an angel? I suspect the answer lies somewhere in between. Evolutionary scientists have long searched for the missing link, the anthropological enigma which is supposed to link humans to the animal kingdom. But while studies of fossils have failed to provide any answers, it may just be that the real missing link is alive and well and answering to the name of Oliver. Ever since man learnt to stand up straight, he's been asking himself where he came from. Through the work of Charles Darwin, most of us now accept that we're descended from apes. But the search for the so-called missing link between man and monkey has preoccupied scientists for years. After the Yeti or Abominable Snowman and Bigfoot, the latest candidate is an unusual animal called Oliver, whose attributes have puzzled experts and alerted the interest of British zoologist Jonathan Downs. I had a very bizarre phone call about six years ago from a friend of mine in the States who phoned up and said that Oliver the chimpanzee was the result of a secret CIA experiment to crossbreed humans and anthropoid apes. So I started looking through the available literature about him and I found out that in fact Oliver had been around for a long time. Oliver was brought over from Africa in the late 1960s and for the next 16 years was exhibited in circuses and sideshows across America as a baby Bigfoot. His distinctive appearance and ability to walk upright sparked considerable scientific debate as to his true origins. There are five main theories which have been proposed to account for Oliver's existence. Firstly, that he is some sort of ape-human hybrid. Secondly, that he is um, an agogui, which is a semi-mythical African man-beast. Third, that he is a cross between a chimpanzee and a agogui. Fourth, that he is a cross between a chimpanzee and a pygmy chimpanzee. And fifth, that he is a ordinary chimpanzee suffering from Down syndrome. In 1976, Oliver was bought for $8,000 by a US attorney who showed him off to the world's press at a gala dinner in New York. In the 1980s, Oliver disappeared from public view when he was sold to a medical research laboratory. But 10 months ago, he was rediscovered by an ape rehabilitation sanctuary in Texas. And once more, Oliver came under scientific scrutiny. Of course, I questioned all along the stories in the tabloids and wondered whether the claims about Oliver being so different physically uh, were true, but as he walked and as I could see him, it was immediately apparent. There's no other ape that walks exactly like Oliver does or looks the same. No chimp trained to walk upright walks in the same way he does, with his shoulders back, straight upward, and with his knees locked. Additionally, his head is smaller, his nose protrudes more, his ears are set higher than those of other chimps. He's very small for a chimpanzee. Even his scent is different from the normal scent of a chimpanzee. It's very rank and quite distinct. 
Further evidence for Oliver's unusual genetic makeup has come from the reactions of normal chimpanzees to Oliver's human behavioral patterns. He doesn't get along uh, with other chimps. They don't accept him um, as if they know that there's something different about him. Look here. As much as we've tried in the last few months to get Oliver in a social setting with chimpanzees, he much prefers to relate to people. What are you doing? Oh, you're silly. <laughs> in order to solve the mystery of Oliver's true origins, samples of his blood have been sent to the University of Chicago for sophisticated DNA analysis. Although the final results won't be available until June, a preliminary chromosome count has revealed that Oliver is definitely not a human hybrid. Wally Sweat believes that Oliver will prove to be an entirely new species or subspecies of ape. However, others are not so sure. I hope that the genetic tests which Oliver is having performed on him at the moment are going to sort out the mystery. However, being both a Fortean and a skeptic, I have a sneaking suspicion that we'll never know. Fortean TV went to meet a Pakistani bank clerk on holiday in Singapore, Mr. Mohammed Channa. At seven foot, eight inches tall, he's in the Guinness Book of Records as the tallest man alive. Pretty cool. Mr. Channa's extraordinary height comes from an excess of growth hormones from the pituitary gland. His condition isn't hereditary. His children are average height. It's huge. When I go on holiday, the whole town comes out to see me, and I have to answer all these questions. And what's it like being the tallest man on earth? Oh, so many problems. I can't even tell you. I can't move around as easily as everyone else does. Since a recent car accident, Mohammed can walk for only 10 minutes at a time and always has his normal-sized friends for support. Massive. <laughs> his worst problem in Singapore is at night. Nearly three feet taller than the locals, Pakistan's gentle giant is too big for the hotel bed and has to sleep on the floor. Have you ever been to meet a long-lost friend and been surprised at how little they've changed? Our next item is from a viewer who had an encounter of the Fortean kind while on holiday in Blackpool. It was one school reunion that changed his mind about his old friend forever. I'm writing this letter to tell you about a very strange experience my wife and I had about five or six years ago. We decided to take a long weekend break, so off we went to Blackpool and we arrived late Friday evening and the wife, Lorraine, being tired, she decided to go to bed. So I fancied a drink, so I went to a pub at the top of the road. I stood there having a pint and I saw a man looking at me from the other end of the bar, which I thought was a bit strange. So I just ignored it and after a while this man sort of came over to me and he says, is your name Norman? And I looked at him and I thought, well, I don't know what I thought, really. Um, I said, yeah, it is, actually. He says, well, I'm Jimmy Marriott. Then the penny dropped. Jimmy Marriott was our next-door neighbour when we were kids, and uh, I hadn't seen him for a lot of years. Cheers. Cheers. We had a drink, and we got talking, and he asked how my sister was, because he used to fancy her a bit. They are about the same age. I told him she was fine and we chatted a bit more and then the landlord rang the bell for last orders. And um, we arranged to meet the following evening because they wanted to meet my wife Lorraine. We went down to the pub about half past eight but there was no sign of Jimmy. So we hung on a bit and then I asked the landlord, I said, did, did you see the fella I was talking to last night? And uh, he said, no, I'm sorry, he says, uh, I saw you come in, but I didn't see anyone with you, which I thought was strange. We waited and we waited a bit longer, uh, getting a bit fed up. So we decided we'd had enough. We went for a walk round town. Um, 
we have finally arrived home on the Monday and uh, my sister rang me, asked how the weekend went and I said to her, I met a friend of yours on Friday evening, Jimmy Marriott. Hello? Yeah, you're there. I thought I'd said something wrong. Eventually she said to me, uh, if you're trying to be funny, it's in very bad taste. And then she told me that Jimmy Marriott had died in a car accident on his way home from work at 6.30 on the Friday evening. And I thought, well, this is very strange because I'd been having a drink with him at 9, 9.30 on the Friday night. I'll have to get back to you, look. I'll have to have a sit down. There's so many things I've wondered about, you know, it, uh, why that pub? How come the landlord didn't see Jimmy, but he saw me? It's very strange, to say the least. But we were stunned, weren't we? We, we just couldn't imagine Norman having said he spoke to this man in the pub and then found out that he'd died before Norman saw him. It was, we were stunned. Totally weren't stunned, we? yeah. I hate those guys. Unfortunately, the feeling isn't mutual. Why is it that some of us are more appetizing to these blood-sucking brutes, while others are just left in peace? Some people say it's all to do with blood, but as our next item shows, it may have more to do with a wedge of cheese. Africa's most dangerous creature is Anopheoles gambii, better known as the mosquito. When this tiny insect feeds on human blood, it transmits malaria parasites, currently responsible for two million deaths in the continent every year. 5,000 